Robert Meacham led the way for the Saints over the Redskins, but our owners are wondering, do you start him over fill in the blank? We're going to answer that question right now on Fantasy Football, brought to you by Norton, because every click matters. I'm Lauren Shahadi. Alongside Jamie Eisenberg, Robert Meacham has been impressive. But one of our fantasy owners from Toronto wants to know, do you start him over Calvin Johnson or Brandon Marshall? It would kill me, he says, if Meacham blows up in Atlanta. How many times do you wonder that? You know, if I sit him, what if he blows up? I actually want to start filling the blank because filling the blank may be actually a good <laughs> wide receiver. He's and a good the matchup. Blank, fill in the blank has a good quarterback. Filling the blank has a good matchups. And filling the blank may give you the most fantasy points. Smart, uh, Alec. I, I think when you look at these three wide receivers, I think you have to sit Robert Meacham because you're looking at the other two guys, and I think they just have a little bit more upside. They're playing at a high level as well. They're probably going to be in situations where they're throwing the ball because you look at the matchups for those two receivers. Meacham is great. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that you have to sit him, but let's keep in mind the last time that he did not reach double digits in fantasy points was against Atlanta. So I think you're seeing a guy still going to play well. I have him as a start and start him to sit him. We'll get into that in the next video when you see it on Thursday. But I still think when you're talking about these three guys, Lauren, it's hard to bench those other two even as well as Meacham is playing. And all three of them played well in Week 13. Absolutely. As did these guys, Alex Smith or Court War War Warner, rather. <clears throat> you got to choose one, Jamie. Yeah, they're facing each other head-to-head. -head. I think when you look at these guys, as great as Alex Smith has looked over the last few games, he has seven touchdowns, one interception in his last three outings. But Kurt Warner, we saw against a tough Vikings defense, 285 yards and three touchdowns. They are playing for the division in this game. They're going to put the uh, 49ers away. I think Kurt Warner, as long as he's healthy, you know that's been the key with the concussion over the last couple of games. He's fine now. We know he's going to start, and he looked great. You know about those two receivers, Anquan Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald. I like Smith. I think he's a sleeper. But I'll tell you one thing, Lauren. If I have to choose between these two guys, A, I'm very happy because I got two good quarterbacks. <laughs> but B, I'm sticking with the guy who's gotten me this far. Remember, we're talking about playoffs. This is the fantasy playoff time. You don't want to bench your star players if you don't have to. And in this case, he doesn't have to. But what surprised me is that Alex Smith isn't owned in about 29% of leagues, is yeah, he? Yeah, well, it's, it's also you got to keep in mind what time of year it what is that we, we lose a lot of fantasy owners because the playoffs are here. But at the same time, we see a lot of people picking up uh, Alex Smith to use him for the next few games because he's got Detroit and St. Louis still on the schedule. All right, you're going to own this next question. All I can right. just feel it. You ready to go? I need to start two wide receivers from Larry Fitzgerald, Anquan Bolden, Pierre Garçon, Sidney Rice, and Michael Crabtree. I'm thinking of starting both Arizona players. Is this a sound strategy considering the matchup? And judging by the way he answered that last question, I'm wondering if you say yes. Well, I, I would say yes if you didn't have so many other great players on your roster. I think you want to spread out the production a little bit because let's keep in mind, if Kurt Warner only throws one touchdown or two touchdowns, you hope it's got to be to one of these two guys or both of these two guys. But I don't think you could count on a weekly basis seeing what we saw last week against Minnesota where they've scored three touchdowns between the two wide receivers. Larry Fitzgerald is a must. You don't bench him. You play him every week. The other guy, though, I would probably play is Sidney Rice. I actually got a chance to speak to Sidney Rice on Tuesday. I'm going to do a story about Sidney and his absolutely fantastic performance over the last few weeks and over the course of the season. And another great third-year breakout playing with Brett Favre, playing at a high level. I think you get the number one guy for the Vikings, the number one guy for the Cardinals. You can't go wrong with those guys. And what you're looking at, is that, again, this is the type of decisions you want to make. You want to make decisions that really you can't go wrong. Because right. if you play Bolden or Rice, you're probably going to get good production. If you play Garcon, who's been amazing, you're going to get good production. There's just a lot of good wide receivers on that list. But again, I would take the two number one options from those respective teams. Sounds good. You know, when I was talking to Sidney Rice last week, no, I'm kidding. That never happened. <laughs> okay, Ross in Dallas wants to know what's wrong with Vincent Jackson. I have Jackson, Braylon Edwards, and Hakeem Nix. Do I really consider benching Jackson for these two guys, Jamie? Yeah, Jackson's really fallen on hard times recently because you're starting to see defenses now roll their coverage to Jackson and try and take him away, which is why you've seen Antonio Gates have a couple big games. And you're seeing Phillip Rivers spread the ball around to his running backs between LaDainian Thompson and Darren Sproles, Malcolm Floyd, Legadu Nani. You're seeing all these other guys really step up. But I think at some point Jackson's going to have a breakout game, and this game has the potential to be high scoring. I think when you look at, when you're talking about the other two guys that you have there, I don't know if I would trust them over Jackson, especially at this point in the season. We've seen Braylon Edwards disappear at times, and Akeem Nick still being a rookie wide receiver. I still think you got to keep Jackson in there, and the key decision would be if you have to make it between Jackson and one of those other guys, then I may go with Braylon Edwards because he did score a touchdown last week and has a favorable matchup because Tampa Bay, even though their pass defense looks good statistically, they've given up a lot of passing touchdowns. So I think you'll see if Mark Sanchez, as long as his knee is okay, Braylon Edwards could have a pretty decent game. All right, Jamie, I have a last question of the day, and I'm interested to see how you answer this because I want to try and answer it, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, William in Boston, he gets this question. Brandon Jacobs, Jonathan Stewart, Jerome Harrison, or Fred Jackson? 
Well, who okay. will you go? Well, here's the thing. Yesterday in our video, you said Jerome Harrison is the man in Clay Flynn, right? And then Jonathan Stewart with D'Angelo Williams, he's not going to play, right? So potentially. You, we don't potentially. Know mm -hmm. Would you pick those two? Well, I think you got good choices there, but I think I would probably stay away from Harrison if you can because John Stewart, to me, if D'Angelo Williams is out, is a must. You can't go away from what he did last week with 120 rushing yards and a touchdown. Then the other decision comes down to three guys who are really sort of difficult guys to figure out because we've seen Brandon Jacobs really struggle at times this year, coming off a great game, and we know the Giants are desperate at this point. They can't lose to Philadelphia if they want to make the playoffs. I think Jacobs gets a little bit of an edge because I think you could almost pencil him in for 10 fantasy points because he has a chance to score. Take away the 74-yard touchdown catch that he had last week, 39 rushing yards and a goal line touchdown. That's probably a safe assumption for him, somewhere in the 40 to 50 yard rushing range and probably the chance to score. So I would go Stewart and Jacobs as long as D'Angelo Williams is out. Now the interesting thing becomes if D'Angelo Williams plays, then I go Fred Jackson as the third option there because Fred Jackson, even though he's going to share time with Marshawn Lynch, fantastic matchup against Kansas City. And that's what we look for is the matchups. I just think Jerome Harrison against the Steelers, Pittsburgh's playing for their playoff lives and this is a desperate game for them. And the other thing to keep in mind, Harrison showed up on the injury report on Wednesday with an illness. So if, in fact, he's a little bit under the weather in 30-degree we or 30 degree winds in some real bad weather potentially in Cleveland, I know he's going to get the majority of carries, but I think you want to stay away from him if you can. I'm one out of two if D'Angelo Williams doesn't Absolutely. play, right? That's you know not bad. That's right. Hopefully your team is the opposite of bad. Hopefully it's really, really good. <laughs> and to aid you, fantasy football today every Sunday, 11 o'clock for two hours with this guy this week. And we'll see you later.